Well, I think there are essentially two key strands that are striking. Um, one key strand that's obviously grabbing a lot of attention right now in the American political world is the fact that Gary Cohn has made it very clear that he disapproves of what the president said about Charlottesville. He has wrestled with his conscience about staying or not staying in his, in his position, but has decided to do so because, as he says, as a Jewish person, he does not want to be pushed out by neo-Nazis chanting, um, Jews should not replace us. But the other aspect that we're very interested in at the Financial Times is this new push on tax. The fact that the White House has decided that tax is going to be the absolute top priority this autumn and they're going to try and appease their business supporters and the Republicans by actually executing some tax reform, they hope. Jillian, can you talk a little bit about, you know, that part on Charlottesville? Was that conversation just natural? It feels like a lot of these statements, including when he said citizens standing up for equality and freedom can never be equated with white supremacist neo-Nazis and the KKK, were thoughtful, they were careful. They almost read like a series of statements, which his colleague, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, put out, uh, and very careful not to name the president by name. It was sort of a subtle condemnation of the president's response. Well, this was not a statement, this was a conversation, but we did go back and forth a bit and his comments and words were tidied up on this point because he felt very strongly that he wanted to put out a balanced set of comments. Um, this is obviously an area that he had been wrestling with deeply. Um, I say that as simply as a description of what has been going on. He has been communicating with a wide range of people about what he should do. And he felt very strongly that he wanted to get his words right on this point. Um, because heavens only knows, loose words on the issue of racism and anti-Semitism have caused all manner of heartache and grief in the last um, few days. Julian, I, I'm wondering the extent to which you think, based on this conversation uh, with Gary Cohn, the approach to tax reform is going to be bipartisan. Uh, there, there's so much friction right now in the Congress. The president often talks about wanting to ram things through, Republicans only. Did Gary Cohn signal any kind of a bipartisan approach? Well, of course we asked him that, and his point was that, of course, they would love to do something on a bipartisan basis. Um, they are keen to try and see if there are ways that they can work with the Democrats. The reality is at the moment that the climate is so poisonous and people are so divided on policy issues that they know it's going to be extremely hard. So the thrust of the approach right now is that they're going to put this over to the Ways and Means Committee. They're hoping to push it through through reconciliation. And essentially that is what they're geared up at. But at the moment the White House is saying that they want to leave it to the committee, to Congress, to try and thrash out the precise details. They'd say they're doing that because they want to essentially respect the due process of Congress. But at the same time, some people might say it's because they actually recognize that the White House trying to dictate anything at the moment may not be the most effective way to try and advance policy. Hi, I'm Tanya Breyer, and that was just a taster of what you can find on CNBC Life. For more award-winning content, just click on the videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching.